Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. Today I thought we'd go over nail constraint. So these can be found in the effects menu under fields and solvers. Then here at the bottom we have what they call legacy rigid bodies. And it's considered legacy because there is a lot of new stuff in Maya 2016 that uh, uses other types of uh, abilities that Maya 2016 has. But they keep these in here because even though they are old they're still useful so here we have create nail constraint under fields and solvers there are also other kinds of constraints pin constraint hinge spring and barrier and whenever we go to create nail constraint options here you can see here they have a constraint type and when you pull this down you get those same uh, types of constraints to choose from so no matter which constraint type you choose from that list you can always change it here in this pull down menu and as you change these things the options that they give you to use here also change so if we extend everything out you'll see all this stuff is grayed out and as I change between the different constraint types different parts of the options become available so it's just a matter of whichever constraint type you use that's the section of the constraint options that becomes available this section down here is labeled spring attributes, so you'll have to use a spring constraint type for the spring attributes to become uh, usable, which makes sense. So we're going to be going over all of these constraint types in the near future, and I thought we'd start with nail. So the nail constraint type here has probably the least uh, options available, aside from changing the name of the constraint, which you can do for any of them. You can also choose to set the initial position with this checkbox, and you get this XYZ uh, input boxes with sliders to change that initial position, which we'll get back to. So I'm going to say Edit Reset Settings. So I have my default settings here with my constraint type as a nail. But first, I need something to constrain. So let me minimize this, and I'll go to Create Polygon Primitives Sphere make a simple sphere like this and I'll hide the grid for now so with my sphere selected I'll open up my constraint options again and so here you can name the constraint or if you leave it blank it will be given a default name so I'll leave it blank for now I'm going to choose a nail constraint type and again these can be found on the effects menu set under fields and solvers create nail constraint here and we're just in the options by using this box so with the nail constraint type selected, my sphere selected in the scene, I get create. So you can see it created a rigid nail constraint one, that's the default name, otherwise it would have taken the name you specified in the options. And you don't really see it, but if I hit four for wireframe, you'll see there's this little green square in the center of my sphere. And if I were to move that square up like this, so after I move the nail up like this, and let go, you'll see there's a line connecting that square to the center of the sphere. And if I move the sphere, that line will change also to stay with the center of the sphere, the other end of the line. So this little box represents the nail. So if you can imagine this little box is a nail and this line is a string attached from the nail to the sphere. And so as I move this sphere around that string is still connected to the nail and it's following the object. The nail constraint is, is a dynamics function so that whenever I choose this object and let's say I move it over here and now I apply gravity to my sphere if I go to fields and solvers gravity with my sphere selected so now I have gravity in the scene and the sphere uh, turns pink or purple to indicate that it's being affected by the gravity. And now I'm going to display my animation controls. If I go to display UI elements, I'll break this off and choose time slider and range slider just to have those elements here at the bottom of the screen show up. So I hit shaded view so it's easier to see. And I'm going to add more frames to my scene just so I have more than just one second's worth of animation. So I'll say like 500 frames. Rewind it and hit play and you'll see how my sphere reacts with the nail constraint and gravity 
So the gravity is pulling the sphere down, but that nail constraint is acting just as you'd expect with a nail and a string attached to the sphere. It's making the sphere just kind of hang in the air and swing back and forth with this string, this imaginary string attached to this imaginary nail. Now if we move this nail position, the sphere you see out here, when I move up, up to where the sphere is, you get a different result based on where that nail is located in compared, comparison to the sphere. So here's the sphere's starting position. If the nail is right above it and I have gravity applied to the sphere, we're not going to get much movement because it's just kind of hanging there. Hit play. And it just kind of hangs. Because the sphere is attached to the string, it's attached to the nail, and gravity is pulling it down, but because it's already kind of at the length of the string, it's not going to really move. It's going to hang there. Rewind this. And move, I can move my nail back over here and get that swinging motion again. Like so. And that's essentially how the nail constraint works. You can change with your rigid solver inputs. We have a lot of the bounciness and the friction and so on that other uh, rigid bodies use and you can adjust these to change you know how fast the ball swings and so on also the strength of the gravity or the magnitude of the gravity will also change how fast the ball is pulled down the magnitude of 9.8 that's kind of simulating earth's gravity that changes to something like 20 which would be incredibly strong gravity it'll swing faster because it's being pulled down harder so yeah, um, that's pretty much the gist of the nail constraint. If I uh, delete the nail and hit delete, rewind, press play, my sphere will just drop because it's no longer nailed to the wall, or if you want to call it that. So let me slip my sphere again with my nail constraint having been deleted. I'll go back to fields and solvers, create nail constraint options, and the other attribute that we have available for the nail constraint is the set initial position and we have this unchecked at first and if you remember the nail constraint started at the center of the sphere and we had to move it to move it to whatever position we wanted it to be in but if we check this box we can actually change the position that the nail constraint starts at here as opposed to moving it later so if we wanted it to be five units in the y axis for example and hit apply You'll see now it's over here because of, because of where our grid is. You see it's five units above the origin of the scene. So that's just setting the initial position. You can set it in here, or I find it quite easy to just uh, move it after the fact. And it works the same way. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will be going over more constraints in the future. And if you have any suggestions or requests for other topics you'd like to see discussed, uh, and you, to learn about if you're curious about, uh, let me know. And thanks again for watching.